times are tough and we need things for free, so here are a bunch of movies to watch on Tubi. In this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 horror movies and thrillers that are currently on Tubi right now that I highly recommend you watch. First up is Candyland from 2023. This movie is about a religious woman who is cast out from her devout religious family and she seeks solace in the arms of sex workers at a truck stop and she fully immerses herself in that world. And it seems like all is well, she's adapting well, and then people start dying and it turns into a slasher. This one is really gritty and sleazy. It just has that dirty feel. The cast is great and it has some surprising moments, some surprising kills, and overall I think it's a really interesting watch. Be prepared for lots of sex. Next is Where the Devil Roams from 2023. This is the latest from the Adams family who you might remember from last year with Hellbender. This family is so cool. They basically write, direct, act, do everything for these movies because they're so passionate about it and that passion comes through the screen. In this one, we're focused on a family of carnival performers who find interesting and unique ways to stay alive. Over the course of the film, you learn more about this family, their dark past, and things take an interesting turn. I really like the vibe of this one. It's very dark, bleak. It won't make you feel good. It has some pretty violent moments, some great special effects, some creepy moments, and a great group of characters to follow. Next is Mother May I from 2023. This is a psychological horror about a guy and his new girlfriend who return home after the death of his mother. And he had a really difficult, rocky relationship with his mother growing up. You get the sense that it was very abusive. He's trying to come to terms with his mother's death and living in their house now. And he notices that his fiance is going through some changes. She starts to exhibit behaviors of his mother. She starts to speak like his mother. It's like her mother's spirit has inhabited her. And things get really intense at times. You think this is definitely on the slower side. It's more psychological. I think Kyle Gallner and Holland Roland make this movie. They're so fun to watch. It's so fun to watch Holland kind of transform into this uppity, uptight mother figure who I believe was an artist or a dancer. And it's just interesting to see them play off of each other. There's some really creepy unsettling moments throughout and overall, I think it's a decent watch. Next is the found footage Sorgoy Prokof, also known as Descent into Darkness, My European Nightmare. This is a found footage horror about a man who is a filmmaker. He is documenting his trip to Europe. What starts out as a normal trip turns into an absolute nightmare as we watch the filmmaker descend into madness and eventually start killing people. This one was really surprising. It almost feels like a real documentary that you're watching, and I think the lead director character is very good. He kind of comes off as a lovable goof in the beginning, kind of naive, and then I think he slowly transforms and descends into madness. You actually see that transformation happen, and then when it happens, it's insane because he goes to horrific, horrendous acts of violence and it's prolonged moments that we get to see as the viewer as he's recording these acts. It just was very disturbing and unsettling to watch because he does some really horrible things. I do think that this is a well-made found footage film. I think it's for people who are into the more disturbing watches. Other disturbing found footage horror is Capture Kill Release from 2016. This is about a couple who are documenting the process leading up to them murdering a stranger. So it's following a husband and wife team. They're going to kill somebody for the first time and they're really excited about it. We get to see them go through the hardware store to pick out their best murder weapon. We see them talking about what type of victim they are looking for. We see them interacting with strangers on the street trying to determine who's the best fit and we see them take out the axe that they're excited about. What is scary about this to me is that it feels very real. It feels like a real recording from this crazy couple and it's just scary to think that there are actually people out there like this couple. I think this couple felt very real and they played it off very real and one of them is clearly more into it than the other and it's just interesting and scary to see how casually they speak of murdering somebody. It's really dark, it's disturbing, it's sad. It's another one that is good if you're looking for a disturbing watch and if you like found footage horror. I think they utilize the found footage element perfectly here. Next is a religious horror from 2023 called Resurrected. This is another kind of found footage horror. It's more screen life horror where 
we're in a world where the Catholic Church has figured out how to resurrect people from the dead. And in doing so, the entire world turns to the church. And there's lots of rules to follow. You can't sin. And they have people who will look into your past and basically audit you to make sure that you can be resurrected when you die. And our lead character that we're following, he lived a very sinful life prior to this. And his son died but was resurrected. He was one of the first to be resurrected. And he turns to God. He becomes a priest. And now he he's fully immersed in this world and he's actually counseling people who have been resurrected and then one day the resurrected people start killing people violently and he's looking into this and trying to figure out if there's a bigger conspiracy involved with the church and if his son is in danger i thought this one was a really unique take on the religious horror trope i like the aspect of the church actually resurrecting people and getting the entire world to believe in the church and want to go to the church i think that was an, a unique element of the way they utilized the desk cam screen life moments because it made sense for the most part. It gets scary and intense while you're trying to figure out what's going on, are our characters in danger, and what is happening. And when you figure out what happens or what is happening, it's really scary. I think that it's really entertaining, it's thrilling at times, it's unsettling, and it's a pretty decent found footage horror movie. Next is Amusement from 2008. I've talked about this one before on my channel. I think this is severely underrated. It's very much a 2000s horror, but it's so charming. I have such a nostalgic feel for it when I watch it. This is actually an anthology horror. It's about three young women who are being terrorized by a stranger from their past, and each segment follows each girl as they're dealing with this crazy person in their own situation. One girl is on the road. She's being terrorized by somebody on the road. One girl is being terrorized by a room full of clowns and another girl is being terrorized in this creepy haunted hotel. I love the cast in this. First of all, that's the standout to me. I love the vibe and atmosphere of it. It's cheesy at times as a 2000s horror can be. It's over the top at times, but I feel like it leans into it and doesn't take itself too seriously, so it's a lot of fun. I think that there's some surprising scary moments, some pretty cool gore moments, but of course they're ridiculous. It's all ridiculous, but it's just so entertaining to me. I just think it's a really fun horror slasher that I overlooked for such a long time and I'm so glad I finally watched it because it's a new favorite of mine. Next is Change from 2012. This is from director Jennifer Lynch who I think is David Lynch's daughter. This one is really dark. This is a psychological thriller about a man who kidnaps a mother and son. He murders the mother and then keeps the son in captivity for like 10 years or so, or maybe even longer than that. And he essentially raises this boy to be how he wants, and he's training him to be like him. You get the sense that this, this boy is still holding on to his former life and his mother and the good part of him, and he's kind of fighting back. He's doing what he needs to do to survive, but there's something still within him that is good. You're hoping that he's going going to get out of the situation and be good. It's really dark because this guy just brings home women after women, woman after woman to assault them and kill them and this boy is forced to watch and live it and all and clean up after him and essentially help in his acts. Just gets darker and darker as the boy gets older and this guy's realizing he needs to do something with this kid. It's so dark. It's so upsetting. I didn't feel good while I was watching this movie, but I think it's very well made. Vincent D'Onofrio is terrifying as the kidnapper murderer. He's just appalling. He's so scary, but there's also like this weird sense of fatherliness he has for the kid, but there, it's just a weird vibe. Some really shocking and disturbing revelations throughout this, and I think it's just really dark. Apparently, author Anya Alborn, she wrote Brother after watching this movie, so Brother is kind of inspired by this movie, and when you watch the movie and read the book, you can see why. They're very similar in themes. Next is Hideaway from 1995. This is a psychological thriller which is based on the Dean Koontz novel of the same name. Let me tell you, this movie terrified me when I was little because I thought it was showing an actual portrayal of what hell would be like and what happens when you die because I was too young to be watching this movie. I was like six or seven. So this is about a guy played by Jeff Goldblum who gets in a horrific car accident with his wife and daughter. It kills him, but a doctor miraculously is able to revive Jeff Goldblum's character. But you know what? He comes back different and he can see things and he starts having visions of women being murdered and he's connected to this serial killer. He starts to look into this and he tries to figure out how to stop this serial killer because the serial killer can also see Jeff Goldblum and he gets into 
his life and he sees his daughter played by Alicia Silverstone and all hell breaks loose okay and there's moments where you actually see Jeff Goldblum's character dying and coming back after he's being revived and it freaked me out I was like holy shit this is what happens when you die but it's just so cheesy at times because it's very 90s and the special effects are ridiculous but there's such a nostalgic charm to it that I love it even though it terrified me and I think Jeff Goldblum is great. Jeremy Sisto plays the serial killer that he's connected to. The set pieces are really cool and it's actually a really unsettling story and I want you all to watch it and see why I was terrified as a six, seven-year-old child watching this movie. You get to see what hell looks like, okay? And it's scary. Lastly, one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Creep from 2004. Not to be confused with the found footage creep from Mark Duplass. This is set entirely in the subway, the underground in the UK. And we follow a young woman who is out at a party. She hears about something happening across town. I believe it's George Clooney. She gets onto the train to go to her next destination and unfortunately she falls asleep and she gets locked inside the subway. Perfect setup right there. I love subway settings but a woman being trapped inside alone terrifying. But the thing is, she's not alone. There's actually something or someone lurking through the subway, killing things and people, and she's its next target. And so she spends the entire movie trying to get out of this subway and get out alive and get away from this fucking thing. I love it so much. Yes, it kind of goes off the rails subway pun towards the end of the movie when you figure out what's going on it's a little ridiculous but the setting and vibe the lead actress is fantastic the characters she meets along the way in the subway underground are perfect i love it so much i think that it's just a unique story it's creepy i mean even though the reveal of what's happening in the subway is a little ridiculous it's also kind of cool and very much of its time like that's the thing these movies are of their time and I love it, and I hope you love it too. And there you have it. Those are 10 movies that you can watch on Tubi right now. Please let me know if you've checked any of these out, what your thoughts are in the comments. And thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.